have the Barrier Cannon Pictographs. Located in the southwest, the Barrier Cannon is a remote area in Utah. There you will find amazing pictographs that date back to thousands of years ago. Here's the thing, people are like, bro, those pictures look an awful lot like aliens. Most of the figures displayed there are quite odd. They are around 8 feet tall and shaped like a human but have no arms, legs, ears or noses. They do however have big alien like eyes. Some have been drawn with free floating eyes or wings or with serpents around their hands or above their heads. Other paintings are of animals and humans, but the humans aren't drawn nearly as big as the 8 foot tall weird creatures. The paintings are said to have been done by mixing blood and clay and possibly urine as a binder. Upon analyzing them, they found hair from a paintbrush that dates back to 6750 BCE, meaning maybe people back then were in contact with these humanoid alien type creatures. I mean, they would have have had to had a big impact on their life in order for them to have been painted. Number 9, Stonehenge. So for similar reasons to the massive building blocks of the pyramids, there are a lot of questions surrounding Stonehenge, and we have to talk about them. Just outside of Salisbury, England, there is a a massive circle of 92 stones. We know it was built around four to 5,000 years ago, same time as the pyramids, and the weight of each stone varies from four tons to 50 tons. In July 2020, scientists found evidence that the Sarsen stones trace back to westward Wiltshire around 25, 25 kilometers north of the site. Individually, they weigh around 50,000 pounds, so imagine that. On top of that, scientists have no idea who built it or why. One of the most popular theories is that it was built by the Druids. Stonehenge also lines with solstices and eclipses, which means whoever built it had their eyes carefully on the sky, probably in relationship to their pagan beliefs. But even still, how? Researchers have some theories that may suggest that they had the technology to accomplish this feat around that time, or did they? There are too many questions still unanswered for me to be completely sold that it didn't involve aliens. Number 8, Teotihuacan. Keeping with the theme of ancient potentially alien structures, we have Teotihuacan, aka the city of the gods in Mexico. Though scientists have confirmed that it was built by human hands, many alien enthusiasts still think the jury is still out. Constructed over 2,000 years ago, Teotihuacan age, size, and complexity seems out of this world. The city could house over 100,000 people, and scientists believe that the structure was built through a combined effort of the Maya, Zapotec, and Mistec people. But something really weird happened on May 4th, 2015. A tourist took a picture of the structure, not thinking anything of it at the time. But when he finally looked down at it, he noticed two floating disks above the structure. That, along with the sheer colossal size of the structures, fed the alien conversation. On top of that, as of 2018, scientists have only excavated around 10% of the site. It could be a little over that now, but there are plenty of secrets yet to be revealed, including if those two ships were attempting to return to a lost civilization they helped build. Number 7, The Green Children. The story of the two children who appeared in the village of Woolpit, Suffolk, England, has become what some would call lore, but that doesn't mean to say it didn't stem from something very, very real. In the 12th century, two children with vibrant green skin and weird clothes showed up in the village confused and alone. They spoke a language no one understood, but despite that, the village took them in. Initially, the two refused any and all food offered to them until they took a liking to raw beans. The more they ate and the longer they stayed, the more the green color began to fade. The two children eventually learned to speak English too, just enough to explain where they were from. They spoke of a place where it was perpetually twilight and had been helped helping their dad with the cattle when a loud bang sounded and they turned up in Woolpit and there they stayed. The young boy died sadly after but the little girl ended up growing old in Woolpit, even marrying. Some think they were from a parallel universe, others believe alien teleportation, but follow the paintings and many depictions of them to see if you can decide for yourself. Number 6, Val Camonica, Italy cave drawings. So we talked about petroglyphs last time and if you don't know, stop this video now and check out part 1 because I talk about it there. Go check out part 1. Pause. You back? Okay, good. For those of you who are like, nah, petroglyphs are tiny little cave drawings depicting everyday life of the ancients, usually carved into bronze or cave walls showing people hunting, gathering, and communing with aliens, you know, that kind of stuff. The Valcamonica cave drawings in Italy fueled a lot of alien hype when they were discovered. Carved some 8 to 10,000 years ago before the Bronze Age, the glyphs appear to show men with helmets on their heads and oddly shaped weapons. They even have little lines shooting out from their helmets as if they glow. Alien
alien hunters around the world consider this as indisputable proof that aliens visited our ancient relatives. So who knows? Number five, 250,000 year old aluminum. A couple days ago on date night, we ordered in and the packaging all came wrapped in aluminum. We use it every day. It's one of the most common materials found on earth, making up approximately 8.2% of the earth's crust. So we find it a lot. But did you know, we only figured out how to extract it in the 1800s. So what the heck was a five pound aluminum object doing buried next to 10,000 year old Macedon bones in Romania? Answer, aliens. No one knew at all around that time what aluminum was or how to extract it, yet aluminum made up 89% of the metal wedge they found. The object was clearly crafted by someone and many have theorized that it could have been anything from a tool to the landing foot of an alien spaceship. No one knows the answer, so that just leaves one option. Okay, maybe a few, but one guess onto which one is my favorite. Number four, the Karnak stones. This is like Stonehenge, but three times the size, quite literally. On the northwest coast of France in Karnak, 3,000 megalithic granite stones weighing anywhere from 50 to 100 tons are placed in rows over two miles long. They were carved from local rock formations and erected 4,500 to 2,500 BC at the end of the Stone Age. It is absolutely mind boggling and archeologists are baffled. Legends say giants built Karnak, but the leading alien theory is that they were built in order to communicate with beings in the sky. What do you think that means? Mainstream archaeologists speculate that they are actually two markers, but ancient astronaut theorists began to notice that they are actually laid out in exact geometric positions. The angles are all the same and they follow the Pythagorean theorem. What and who were they trying to communicate with and why? All right, before we hit our top three, if you like this video and you're sticking with it and want a part three, you know what to do. Like this video, subscribe for more, and comment comment on what you want to see next. Number three, the Ulfbert swords. Okay, instead of the lady in the lake, what if Excalibur was actually given to us by aliens? And by Excalibur, I mean like the closest thing, which were the Ulfbert swords. So you pretty much had to carry a sword with you at all times in medieval times because you just never knew. I was around the corner. Thieves, hooligans, who knows? But they were actually pretty expensive. A run of the mill one would cost anywhere between 1200 to 24 grand in today's prices. But Ulfbert swords were priceless and the technology it took to make them shouldn't have existed. So how were they made? The Ulfbert swords are a collection of Viking swords dated between 800 to 1000 AD. They were the strongest, sharpest, and most flexible swords ever made, but the technology used to make them couldn't be replicated until the 18-1900s. The process for combining the materials used to make the swords required an oven set at 1600 degrees Celsius, which was not only hot enough to melt the materials, but also draw any impurities. Then other metals could be added. Production of these swords appears to have ceased within 200 years of their inception, but no other name besides Ulfbert lends a clue as to who made them. So how did they get the technology and was it actually made by a human are the two questions that surround these swords. We'll leave it up to, I don't know, the future to decide. I guess we'll never know, who knows. Number two, the Dropa stones. Could the Dropa stones be definitive evidence of an ancient alien visitation? Let's discuss. In 1938, 716 12,000 year old discs were found in a cave somewhere on the border of China and Tibet. Each is one one foot in diameter and stranger yet, they seem to depict some kind of strange event. Along the walls of the cave where they were found, strange markings depicting men in round helmets with the sun, moon, and stars surrounding them are on the walls. Even stranger, Dr. Chi Pute also recorded finding strangely shaped skeleton bodies with heads larger than normal. But even more suspiciously, the discs disappeared after the story of the alien visitation was translated from the discs. They were stored in the Beijing University for two decades before they were released to be studied finally. However, after the stones were taken down after their exhibition, they haven't been seen since. What do we think, friends? Let us know in the comments. Number one, Serpur, India, the Sarang Tila Temple. This structure dates back to the 17th century AD, but was buried by an earthquake in 11th century AD. But somehow it survived. Blocks were held together by iron paste, which was one of the main reasons it survived, along with three hollow shafts beneath the structure designed to dissipate an earthquake. The recipe for the paste is 4,500 years old and is from an ancient Indian text called the Maya Mamantan, an architectural manuscript passed down from the king of the demigods, Mayasura, who oversaw various construction projects, including cities in the sky. There are many points in the temple that imply that the knowledge came from somewhere else. Even the head archaeologist, Dr. Arun Sharma, believes that aliens visit and gave the townspeople the technology. In your opinion, where did this knowledge come from? Those who are more advanced 
in other planets uh -huh. used to visit the earth and i think they must have given some knowledge to the local people so there you are evidence from the head archaeologist himself so i guess it's up to us number 10 uap report alien fans and skeptics alike were pretty shocked when just a few months ago the national aeronautics and space administration or nasa said that they believed in aliens well actually they said they were going to be investigating unidentified flying objects but Close enough. While some people did believe that this was NASA saying, hey, we believe in aliens, it was actually them announcing they were going to launch a study into UAPs, or Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, because I guess they're just too good to say UFO. The scientist coordinating the study said, over the decades, NASA has answered the call to tackle some of the most perplexing mysteries we know of, and this is no different. In the report, they said that a good chunk of confirmed unidentified objects seemed to show evidence that they were made using advanced technology that humans just don't have yet. Moving on at number 9, we have the rock paintings. For years, archaeologists in Sharma, India have been baffled by these weird ancient rock paintings. The paintings are around 10,000 years old and they look like they depict aliens and UFOs. Archaeologist Junior Back said, and I quote, the findings suggest that humans in prehistoric times may have seen or imagined beings from other planets. Some of the paintings show these weird alien shaped figures with massive heads, whereas other drawings are of what appears to be UFO spaceships. In other pictures, these weird humanoid figures are wearing what appears to be spacesuits. In fact, locals in the village would worship the paintings and tell great stories about small people coming down from the sky in round shaped flying objects, abducting people, and then never returning. So, were the prehistoric people just super creative, or were they actually greeted by these aliens? Moving on to number 8, we have Saint Wolfgang and the Devil. This painting was created in the 15th century by famous German Renaissance painter Michael Patcher. It was painted based on the legend about Saint Wolfgang tricking the devil into building a church. So yes, that green guy with the weird face on his ass is supposed to be the devil. But people are like, uh, really? That's an alien. I mean, yes, I admit that this creature doesn't look like a traditional devil, but over the years the devil has been depicted in a number of different forms, including something like this. But no, 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 a number of people strongly believe that it's not the devil he was in contact with, but it was aliens instead, and apparently aliens have faces on their bums. Moving on to number 7, we have the crucifixion of Jesus. Okay, this one is wild, buckle your seatbelt. So take a look at this painting from 1350. It was created by an unknown artist for the Decani Monastery. The artist signed his name Serge, but there's no historical records of anyone with such name. So right off the bat, people are like, okay, so who created this piece? Especially because in the top right and left hand corners of the piece, there are two UFOs with passengers inside. In the right corner, the pilot in the UFO seems to be looking all the way back at the craft behind him. Now, I don't know about you, but no normal human being can do that with their neck unless they're an alien or an owl. On top of it all, this work would have had to have been approved on the detail or else the whole piece would have been repainted. So someone saw this and was like, yep, that's accurate, looks good, meaning aliens were present during Jesus' crucifixion? Also, they didn't have spacecrafts back then, or any flying things, but those two people are certainly flying in something alright, so what's the deal? Well one explanation is that those two UFO things are supposed to represent the sun and the moon, or two divine beings watching over, but a lot of people are just like no, they're aliens. In our sixth spot today we have the Madonna. Painted in the late 1400s, this is a beautiful painting of the Madonna with infant Jesus and Saint John. But if you look in the background, there appears to be a weird spacecraft floating in the sky. In fact, it is emitting beams of light and the man in the back with the dog is looking up at it with his mouth open like what the heck is this? Like he's in awe of it. Even the dog is looking up at it like what the hell is going on here? This craft looks a lot like a UFO. I mean, come on, there's even light rays coming out of it. So what else could it be? Again, people argue saying that maybe it's an angel or some sort of holy entity looking down on her. 
But there's no wings or a body of an angel, and this wasn't the typical way to portray angels. So it seems quite odd and out of place to say the least. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Leonardo da Vinci's paintings. A lot of people think that Leonardo da Vinci was in contact with aliens and was trying to tell us through hiding secret messages in his paintings. First off, people thought that Leo was way ahead of his time. Like he was drawing pictures of helicopters in 1493 before it was even a thing. He also talked about ships that could travel underwater, submarines, like he came up with a lot of modern day inventions somehow back then. So people were like, okay, he's either a time traveler or an alien or he's in contact with aliens and they were telling him how to advance society. Now here comes the freaky part. Someone mirrored and lightened his painting of St. John the Baptist, and it appears as if there's an alien face in there. It is truly quite freaky. It straight up looks like an alien from The Predator or something. Then you have his famous work of art, the Mona Lisa. Turns out if you do the exact same thing to this painting, you also see an alien's face. So what do you think? Was Leo subtly trying to tell us something? If so, why would he make it so hard for us to find? Also, I want to know who went around like, mirroring and lightening these images? Like, were they purposely looking for a coded message? Should we be doing that to all paintings or what? Moving on to number four, we have the glorification of the Eucharist. This is another religious painting that might include signs of alien life. So in this painting from the 17th century, we see God and Jesus looking out over God's kingdom. But what's weird is that there is this weird round object between the two with antennas sticking out of it. It looks a lot like Russia's Sputnik satellite. Now, the sphere is the creation globe, like to represent Earth and the cosmos. But people argue that if that was so, then how come there's no stars? And how come it looks like it has almost a metallic reflection? And what about the antennas, okay? Some say that it's magic wands, but it can't be because they look like they retract, like antennas. I don't know about this one, okay? There's two theories. One, aliens provided them with such a device, or two, someone is a time traveler. I don't even know anymore. Coming in at number three, we have Um No Chiri. This illustration is part of a UFO legend from the 1800s. The fact that back then they had stories talking about spacecrafts and extraterrestrials makes it seem like aliens are indeed real. This Japanese story talked about a sailor finding a weird floating craft in the ocean which is what this picture depicts. According to the story, the craft was an object made from steel and glass and was big enough to fit a small human inside. On top of that, they said inside of the craft was a small script that they couldn't decipher. Probably because it was like in an alien language, I don't know. But anyways, what are the odds that this story perfectly describes UFOs and drew them just like we picture them nowadays? In our second spot, we have the Paleolithic rock painting. This for sure is a painting of a UFO spaceship and no one can tell me differently. Like there's no way this isn't. Like come on, as a kid, that's how I drew UFOs. What else is it meant to be if it's not an alien spacecraft, hmm? Anyways, this painting was found deep inside of a cave in Neo France. It's dated back to 13,000 BC, which is insane because obviously they didn't have any flying devices back then, so what is this a picture of? Maybe they really did come across a UFO. And in our number one spot today, we have Dracula's UFO. Not gonna lie, this is another really freaking weird one. This is a 16th century painting of Dracula's castle, like the real life Dracula, aka Vlad the Impaler. Well, hovering right above the castle in the sky is what looks like a UFO spacecraft. Not only that, but in 2014, a tourist photographed a very similar UFO right above a building in the same area. Could it be that Vlad was actually an alien? Like what if aliens need to feed off of humans to stay alive? And that's why Vlad did what he did. Cause in reality, he was an alien, not a vampire. I don't know, man, this is all too weird. Number 10, the pyramids. Here is the thing about ancient things we don't understand. They didn't have tractors or power tools. How on earth did they build these things? The belief that aliens helped build the pyramids has been a conspiracy theory since before the dawn of the internet. So let's dive in, shall we? The pyramids at Giza in Egypt were built around 4,500 years ago to serve as the resting place for great pharaohs and queens. And they are massive. The Great Pyramid is made of millions of precisely carved stones, about two tons each 
each, not pounds, tons. One ton is about 2,000 pounds, so yeah. Even with today's equipment, it would be a massive challenge. There's also the factor of their precise alignment with Orion's belt that has alien theorists super excited. Another factor that has conspiracies buzzing is that these pyramids are somehow in better shape than the ones built after them. Scientists still don't quite know how they were built, so that's where aliens come in. Due to their complexity and size, aliens or some outer celestial force could be an explanation. But the leading theory is that they were built through the use of many and many and many hands. But even still, something doesn't click there. I think humans were a lot smarter than we often give them credit for, so I'm gonna admit I'm skeptical of the aliens theory, but I'm open to it. And I'm definitely open to all the others on this list. Number nine, injuries. A Freedom of Information Act request caused 1,500 pages of UFO reports and evidence to be declassified and leaked to the public. And what the pages contained was pretty shocking for those who read it. A percentage of the pages included information of how people who reported seeing UFOs and aliens had been legitimately physically affected. Real physical evidence that something unexplained had happened to them. Some of the reports included things like burns, which could have been caused by the jets of a UFO or potential face to face alien interference. Bafflingly, they also confirmed that women who had come into contact with aliens shortly fell mysteriously pregnant after the event, with no explanation as to why they were suddenly with child. Yes, we all know by now how mommy and daddy make babies, but that apparently wasn't a factor in these cases. Alien babies potentially on the way. Number 8. FLIR Alongside these 1500 documents, three separate videos were released that appeared to show UFOs being spotted by the United States military, so let's take a look. The first is titled FLIR and was originally filmed back in 2004 when the USS Nimitz was flying off the coast of Southern California. There had apparently already been an unidentified aircraft in the area for up to a week before the video was filmed. Off the coast, they spotted a large oval shaped object, estimating it to be about 40 feet long and white in color. Four people on the craft saw the object for a running total of about five minutes, although the video is only just over a minute. They were able to track it using their advanced infrared camera and due to the object's shape, they nicknamed it the Tic Tac. All these videos to this day have no real explanation for what the UFOs actually were. Number seven, Gimbal. Next up on the list we have the video titled Gimbal, which was leaked alongside the last one I just talked about. This one's different because we can hear the people in the jet reacting to what they're seeing. They use a similar infrared camera and follow the object that was flying over the east coast. At first they comment that it might be some kind of drone, but then note that it is fighting against incredibly strong winds and appearing to not be affected by it at all. They even comment that there are other unidentified identified crafts in the area, but we don't actually see them as it's locked onto the target. What's interesting about this one, as the people in the video point out, is that it moves in an incredibly strange fashion, appearing to rotate and move around despite the heavy winds it's apparently fighting against. My favorite part of this is that there's one guy calmly stating facts about it while the other cusses and yells in excitement. Is that a f***ing drone dude? Number 6. Go Fast the third and final leaked video is probably the best of the bunch, as the video starts before they have managed to lock onto the target and you can see it moving. The video is pretty correctly titled Go Fast because this thing is moving incredibly fast, like definitely faster than anything else that could have been an easy explanation. It's zipping over the top of the water as they try to get their camera to lock onto it, and when they finally do they start cheering because of just how difficult it was due to how fast the object was moving. Their comments are a mix of excitement and confusion in regards to what they've managed to find, saying look at that thing fly while also going what the f is that thing? People often like to write off UFOs as some sort of secret military practice vessels or training project, so what can it be when the military itself doesn't know what they saw? Number 5. Pentagon Report In May of this year, the Pentagon appeared on a panel where they discussed UFOs, and they revealed just how much information they have about the situation. They said that there are around 400 separate reports of unidentified flying objects coming from military 
military personnel. So while we do have the three leaked videos, there are likely even more locked up in a safe somewhere that offer convincing evidence of the existence of aliens. The deputy director of naval intelligence said, We've seen an increasing number of unauthorized and or unidentified aircraft or objects, and military control training areas and training ranges and other designated airspace. Reports of sightings are frequent and continuous. Well, it definitely sounds like he's trying to sweep it under the rug as someone just like flying a drone illegally onto a military base or something. I think it's safe to say the military have the resources to know if it were something as simple as that. So their confusion and uncertainty makes it seem more and more like aliens are among us. Number four, live stream. In 2016, an incident occurred during NASA's live feed from a camera mounted on the International Space Station that pointed towards the Earth. You can see the Earth's curve, and one viewer noticed that for a short moment, a massive bright object can be seen falling towards the planet. But as quickly as it comes, it's gone as the live feed conveniently cuts out and experiences technical difficulties. The video was posted to YouTube and people immediately started theorizing that NASA had intentionally cut the live feed at this moment to cover up the fact that this bright shape was a UFO, or at least something alien in origin. Many people noted how suspicious this was and started calling out NASA for their actions, while other people were saying that it was just a meteor or some hunk of space junk. A spokesperson for NASA said that the cameras are controlled automatically and it had simply passed out of range causing the video to be cut off, but that's just what they want you to think. Number 3. Alien Junk an astrophysicist from Harvard wrote a book that was titled Extraterrestrial, The First Sign of Intelligent Life Beyond Earth, and it was about how he believed that an object that passed through the solar system in 2017 was actually a piece of alien technology, bringing forward the theory that NASA is actually just ignoring real evidence of alien existence because they're just brushing it off as some random space junk. Whether they believe it really is space junk or they're are just trying to make us think that that's what it is. The object was long and not shaped like any known comet we've ever seen before. It also apparently accelerated away from the sun and he believes it ended up in our solar system accidentally thanks to aliens, saying, a buoy, a grid of pods for communication, other intelligent living organisms, defunct technology or discarded technological trash. These are all plausible explanations. Number two, Buzz Aldrin. Buzz Aldrin was one of a handful of astronauts who were aboard the Apollo 11, the first space flight that put humans on the moon with one small step for man. During their journey, however, they saw more than just the moon. Apparently, they may have seen a UFO. They reported seeing large objects that appeared to follow alongside them. It was confirmed not to be the upper stage of the rocket that would have been detached, as this was 6,000 miles away from them at the time. The event was kept under wraps and nobody talked about it until it was brought up years later, sweeping it under the rug as simply a panel that had disconnected from the ship. But again, that's just what they want you to think. The claims coming from a senior NASA scientist who said he had just called up Buzz on the phone and he had agreed. Did you really talk to him on the phone, senior NASA scientist? Did you really? Number one, ISS report. All right, this one's not actually NASA because it actually comes from a Russian astronaut aboard the International Space Station, and I'm just gonna count it because it's a pretty cool video. He was on board the ISS using his camera to record the southern lights, which are the same as the northern lights, but in the south. It's a time-lapse recording, and for a brief moment, you can see a line of large bright lights moving across the sky. In the tweet the astronaut posted, he referred to them as space guests, saying that while it was only a few seconds in the time-lapse, it was actually around 52 seconds in real time. Some people suggest that it may have been some kind of meteor or satellite, but I'm actually a licensed professional and I say that it was aliens. 